It was a joy to see you today and uh, seeing some folks here today that we haven't seen for a little while and uh, especially happy to see you. We welcome you to Valley Harvest and happy to see all the regular folks here today and welcome you online as well. Uh, God's speaking to our hearts here. I believe uh, a special message for a special time right now. I hope that you sense that. Of course, I think it's my conviction that that's the way it always is. Uh, I know, I, I think sometimes folks think, well, you know, you go to church and you hear a sermon and you come home. I don't believe that. I believe that, uh, I guess I kind of think of myself like Moses. You remember he was on the mountain by himself and God got his attention about something. And God let him know that he had an assignment to deliver. And Moses got willing to do that. And then he sent the message to his people who received it. And I, I have that conviction every week. I hope that you do. That between Sundays, uh, God's going to have something special for us when we get back together again. And uh, that's the way I approach him during the week. That's the way I've approached him this week. I pray that you bear witness with that as we go forward. Um, I believe that that God is an on-time God. I mean, He is an on-time God. You know, in a sense, you could take the Word of God, and it's always valid, it's always true, it's always inspired by God, it's always anointed. But there are times when, because He knows the end from the beginning, and he knows everything there is to know about the world. And he knows everything there is to know about you and me. And so he knows what we need. And he provides a word for us in due season. Aren't you glad? That as believers, as disciples, we can have the confidence of trusting him that way. That, I don't know about, this is all... You know, I didn't plan to say all this, but that affects the way I study, and I hope it affects the way you approach a church service. The expectation that you have. God's going to speak to us this morning. I know you just sat down. You're going to sit down the rest of the time. Uh, I'm going to stand up the whole time. And this is God's Word we're about to read, so I'm going to ask you to stand with me as we honor God's Word. And I'm going to read to you uh, several verses from the ninth chapter of Matthew. Uh, some of them are going to ring true of some of the examples we've used the last few Sundays even. But Matthew chapter 9, beginning with verse 18. It says, While he spake on these things, while he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler. And worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him, and touched the hem of his garment, for she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. 
But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame thereof went abroad into all that land. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I'm able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your holy word today. We thank you for the confidence of knowing that you have something to say to us today. And it's important. It's imperative that we get your word and your truth today. Because we know that when we get it, you cause faith to be triggered and to arise within us. And so, Father, I pray that as the word goes forth, the saints may hear the word and they may hear the word and they may hear the word and as they hear the word that faith would be uh, quickened inside of them to believe you for every need they have anoint our time Lord we give this time to you we bind the evil one he has no place or authority here and we submit now to Jesus our Lord we thank you Father for all that you'll do here today, in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. And you can be seated. This is now the third week that we've been on the subject that we're on today. Uh, if you missed the first two, it would do you good to go back and catch those. You can look this up on YouTube and find the first and the second uh, installment of this series that we're on but if you're here for the first time today you're not that far behind we're going to catch you up we're talking about Jesus being our healer today I want to declare to you on the authority of the word of God that Jesus Christ was is and will always be our healer He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God revealed himself to his people as a healer. He said, I am the Lord God that healeth thee. How many are glad today that you know him as a healer? Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to press in just a yes. Give him praise today. We're going to press in a little further today on this subject. You know, I am convinced that when it comes to the things of God, it is important that we are saturated with His truth on that subject. We hear, and we hear, and we hear, and we hear the Word of God, and eventually... Not the first time we hear it oftentimes. Now it's possible. It's possible for a person to hear God's truth for the first time and faith arise within them to appropriate that word for their lives. But most of the time, for most of us, we have to hear a truth several times. We hear it and we hear it and we hear it and we hear it. And eventually, faith comes to walk it out. I wonder today, do you recognize in your life, in your walk, when faith is present and when it's not? Because just because you heard something doesn't mean that you have faith for it. Just because you have faith in God doesn't mean you have faith for everything He wants to do or you need Him to do in your life. All right, 
I wonder if you recognize it when you have faith present. You see, when you have faith to believe God for something, there is a witness within you. I, I, I don't know how to explain it to you other than, than he said, faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. I can think of times in my life, one very specific time in my life, when I thought I had faith for healing, but I didn't. I mean, I knew what the Bible said about healing and about God healing people. And I would say, well, I believe God can do that. I, I believe he can do that. He can still do that. He's the same yesterday, today. and forever. But when it came down to me having faith myself to receive the healing that I needed or for my wife in that particular time, in that case, to receive the healing that she needed, I didn't have the faith for it. But we invested in a time of hearing the Word of God, focusing on the Word of God, uh, finding out everything we could about what God said in His Word on that subject. And there was a time when we knew that we had faith at that time to believe God for the need that she said, that she had. I said, when faith comes, there's a witness. Do you remember, you probably heard about being saved several times before you got saved. You heard the gospel, but you didn't, you didn't give your life to the Lord right off the bat. But at some point, at some point in your life, there was a witness inside of you that you needed Jesus. And there was a witness inside of you that he meant what he said. If you would call upon his name, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There was a witness inside of you that if you would confess and repent of your sins, he would forgive you. Faith arose and you appropriated it. You see, we walk by faith and not by sight. God said in several places in the Bible that the just shall live by his faith. You know what? I can't live by your faith. And you can't live by my faith. He said the just shall live by his faith. Got the wheels turning yet? I, I, I can kind of see some wheels turning out there. I, I, I'm glad that you're processing. You know, we ended last Sunday talking about touching Jesus and receiving our healing. Aren't you glad today that we have a faithful high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities and when we touch him, virtue still flows out of him to us. How many of you know, when we have a need, all we have to do is to touch Jesus with it. All we have to do is to get connected to our source and the power, the virtue, the miracle flows. It just takes a touch. The, we, we read several places in the Bible where People in their desperation came seeking Jesus to find him. And they had a confidence about them. If I can just touch him, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I am going to be made whole. All it takes is a touch. You know, last week I was across the street at the hardware store. Uh, we needed something here at the Church, I can't remember exactly what it was. Uh, it might have been some bee spray or something or another we were doing. And I just thought, I'll just run across the hardware and get it. And, and I got it and I, I walked up to the counter to, uh, to check out. And the, the terminal was not acknowledging my credit card. And... I had that thing stuck in there, and I pulled it out, and I finally looked at the lady, and, and I said, it don't like my card. She said, let me see it. She looked at it. She said, just tap it on there. 
I said, what? Because I was sticking it in the little slot. And I thought I was going to have to swipe it down that other magnetic strip. She said, you see that little symbol there? Just tap it. I went, that display lit up. Showed the amount of my purchase. She said, there you go. I said, lady, you have taught me. But I'm going to tell you something. Some of us need to learn today that all it takes to transfer Jesus' provision for us is we got to touch him. We've got to touch Jesus. Well, how do we touch him? That's what we're going to talk about in the remainder of the time we have today. How do we touch him? Our text reveals several people that touched him. But there was a couple of statements that Jesus made concerning the people that were healed that captivated me this week as I looked at this. He told the woman with the issue of blood. He said, your faith, your faith. Has made you whole. And he told the blind man. That he had healed. The two blind men that come after him. And and he stopped at one point. He said. Do you think I can do this? And they said yes Lord. They had to witness. And he said. According to your faith. Be it unto you, according to your faith. You see, the way we touch Jesus is uh, by our faith. Do you see why it's important, though, that we stay in the Word of God and we keep ourselves built up on our most holy faith? Not just, it's important that we stay in faith concerning the fact that we have our names written in the Lamb's book of life. And, you know, when we quit breathing here, we're going, our next breath is going to be in heaven. I mean, that's very, very important. That's the most important thing. But there are many other things that God said, I've provided for you, but it takes faith for us to experience them. One of the saddest things To me, is to see a person that has distanced themselves from the truth of God's word and then find themselves in a position of needing a miracle and have no faith for it. Did you hear what I said? Now, maybe you don't see this as often as I do, but as a pastor, I see this often. I am told, uh, I talk to people frequently that are in a position all of a sudden where they need a miracle. A miracle is the only thing that is going to make a difference for them. They don't need, they don't need a, a little help. They need a miracle. But often I'm talking to somebody that doesn't even know that God still does miracles. Often I'm talking with somebody that has no uh, exposure to God's word on healing. And so when you're talking to them about the possibility, you know, Jesus is a healer and he still heals today. And what's happening for them is they're thinking, well, well that would be wonderful. I, I, I hope... That is true. They have found themselves in a terrible spot where life, no, not life, the devil has thrown something at them that only the power of God can make a difference in, but they have not prioritize knowing what God said about it and seeking God and building their faith. And so they don't have faith for it. Have you seen that? Can I tell you, here's another thing I see that I understand it, but it saddens me. 
Because when I talk to people like that, it's like all of a sudden the realization comes to them that the thing that they have had no time for or the thing that they have had shown no interest in has been the lowest, lowest thing that they wanted to talk about. But now it's the most urgent thing for them. It goes from no priority to high priority. But here's the problem with that. At a time when it's hardest for them to have faith, they're trying to build faith instead of just releasing it. Do you see the difference? How many knows it's easier to believe God for small things than it is for big things? Now, it's all the same to God, you understand. I mean, I mean, a great old big thing and a little old tiny thing, it's all the same. He's got the same power. It takes the same power, his power, to do it all. But for me and you, it seems to be harder for us to believe him for the big things than the small things. It is hard for you to believe God for a miracle if you don't have a faith base. Maybe that's why God tells us in His Word that we should pray without ceasing. Well, don't stop. Don't stop praying. Don't act like, oh, I, I got this. I, I can get this and I take care of this on my own. I've heard some people say something silly like, I don't need to bother God for that little stuff. You ain't bothering Him. He loves you. He's interested in you. It honors Him when you talk to Him about everything that touches your life. He said, pray without ceasing. And then, here's another thing He said. He said, be careful for nothing. In other words, don't leave out anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus. Faith is not something that comes full grown overnight. Faith is not something that's all right here. You, you know, it, it's, it, it's not a, about how much you can reason it out. It's, faith is not something that's mechanical. Like, okay, I'm going to do this and then this and then this. We, we think that way. We, it's, I guess it's human nature for us to think that way. How do you get faith to begin with? One way. One way. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And I could go on for five minutes saying hearing. But that's how your faith comes. The Word of God. Faith comes by hearing the Word. And then we sow that Word. Mark, the fourth chapter, gives us a lot of insight. You see, the, he said the sower sows the seed. The seed is always the same, the Word of God. It's the imperishable seed. It's alive and active. But then he talks about the different kind of soil that that seed lands in. Some of it's hard as a rock. Don't penetrate. Some of it's got thorns and thistles and chokes out the word. Some of it's a rock pile. But then he said there's that good soil that the seed comes in and it brings forth fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. It's interesting to me that faith 
varies with the need. Let me explain what I'm saying. Y'all hang with me now. We're, we're, we're going to go as far as we feel like we need to go today. But I can tell you right now, we're not going to get finished with this. And I'm not going to try to push it all in the time we have. We're going to go uh, a little further here. And then we're going to soak on this one and pick up next week. But it's interesting to me that faith varies with the need. Let me explain. Because you have faith in God, it's not a catch-all situation. You can have strong faith for some things and no faith for some things. Some people can believe God for financial things. Lord, I'm in a bind here, but you said, you know, I... I I'm a tither, I'm a giver, I believe your word, I practice what the word says on that. Hey, Lord, I'm in a bind, I got a deadline, I don't know where the money's coming from, but you, you'll, and they'll believe. They can believe for finances, but they can't believe for healing. Some people can believe for healing, can't believe for finances. Some people can believe God for safety, but not for guidance. I made this statement a week or so ago and I'm going to make it again. We cannot afford to be casual about God's word. God's provision for any area of our lives. But today we're talking specifically about healing. Jesus said, as your faith is, so be it unto you. You can touch Jesus with your faith for healing. And when you do, virtue, just like it did for those people in the Bible, virtue means miraculous healing power. But again, for the purposes of today, we're studying specifically healing. So, let me help you with it some. Do you know that it's easier for you to have faith for healing when you're not sick? Think about that a little bit. It's easier for you to have faith for healing when you are not sick. That's why we have to preach on it. That's why we have to study it. That's why we have to confess it when we're well. Because the day of testing will come. The day of trial will come. The day of attack will come. It's easier to have faith when you're well than when you're sick. So I want to talk about some scriptural God-given ways to receive our healing. And there's several of them, but we ain't going to talk about two of them. So y'all don't get worried about the time. We're going to spend quality time on two of these today. And then we'll pick up again next week. But the first way we receive our healing is to stand on the Word of God. You have heard, and you have heard, and you have heard, and you have heard, and you have heard that Word of God. It's been, it's been deposited in your soul and in your spirit. But the time's going to come when the test is going to be there, whether or not you're going to take a stand on that. We sang a song this morning that said, Sometimes the lies seem to be speaking louder. Sometimes what you feel... Sometimes what you experience seems to be hollering at you louder than the Word. But when you're in that situation, take a stand on the Word of God that is in you. You've got to do it. You see, we've got to have vision and an image of one that has been blessed this, it's just one of them things you got to know. you got to know. We, we sang again this morning. 
We are the sons and the daughters of God. And because we are the sons and the daughters of God, we have been blessed with a covenant standing that includes benefits. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Hallelujah! And so when the, the devil tries to bring the symptoms and the sickness and the illness on you, you've got to stand on the Word of God. You've got to know who you are. You've got to understand that there's a thief that come to steal, but Jesus came that you could have an abundant life. You don't settle for, you don't settle for what the devil wants to bring. You're going to stand only for the abundant life. How many of you know that Jesus took the curse and he broke the curse off of us and he released the blessing of God over us? When we got saved, we experienced salvation, but some of us don't know what we got. A lot of us don't know what we got. That word in the word of God, you look it up. I challenge you to look it up with your uh, uh, Strong's Concordance. I did today, this week. But wherever it says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. That word in the original is sozo. And here's what it means. To save. To deliver or protect. King James translates it to heal. To preserve. To do well. To make whole. Now, when you accepted Jesus as Savior, all that was included in the package. Sometimes we've been negligent to operate in the power and the authority that Jesus gave us, but there's no substitute for that if we aim to walk in all He's provided for us. We must know who we are. We must know what He's given us, or the enemy will steal it from us. Jesus said to us, to his disciples, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. I wonder if that registers with you. He said, I am giving you the keys to the kingdom. You better let them jingle once in a while. You better know that they've been given to you. You better know you're walking around with them. The Lord has given you the keys to the kingdom. Several years ago in the late 90s when I was in graduate school in Oklahoma, one of our instructors gave all the men and women that were in that class a silver key. He just came in one day, he, he taught on something similar to what I'm teaching on right here, right now, at this moment. And he was charging us and, and prophesying over us as leaders. And he passed something out. This was in the mid-90s. He gave us all a key. This is the key he gave me. I still got it. Now, physically, there's nothing special about this key. Something he just got at a locksmith. A, a blank key that he gave to all of us. But he prayed over us and he prayed over these keys. And he gave us all of these things. And he said, whatever you do, always be reminded that whatever you encounter as a Christian leader, God has given you the key for a breakthrough. Don't ever forget it. He said, whatever you encounter, 
Always know that the Spirit of God says to you, I'm giving you the keys for the breakthrough. You know what? I've not forgotten that in all these years. And I have kept this key. It lays on the shelf above my desk upstairs. And I look at it on a regular basis. I never see it laying there that I don't think of the meaning that was spoken over me. That God called me and He promised me. He promised never to leave or forsake me. And to provide everything that I need to be fruitful and productive. But God's given you keys. And when stuff comes flying at us, we have to discern its origin. That's why it's important that we're praying all the time and that we develop a sensitivity to the Spirit of God. You know, I don't want to be walking along and the devil just be dumping junk on me all the time and I don't even know it. I'm just walking along and saying, well, where would that come from? I don't know. I don't understand what's going on right now. We, not, we, we must be discerning. And when stuff is happening in our lives, it's got to fall into one of them categories. Pastor Perry talked about it a while ago. Good God, bad devil. I didn't see this coming at me today, but let's see where it come from. Well, it, if it's good, it came from God. If it ain't good, I know where it come from, and it's, I got to get rid of it. And I got I to gotta keep it sorted out so I'll treat it right. Do you know a lot of Christian people treat stuff that the devil sends them like God sent it to them? Oh, they'll tell you. I've had people tell me before, well, no, I'm just glad that God put me through this because he had to teach me this. I bet God's sitting up there thinking, how can, I get, how can I get them to wake up? That wasn't me. How come they didn't understand that theology, good God, bad devil? How come they weren't more discerning of that? I, I have taken the curse for them and, and, and proclaimed a blessing over them. Blessing and favor is theirs. How come they don't understand? How come they won't stand up for the word? If you are going to receive your healing, brothers and sisters, you got to take a stand for what God said. He said, He bore your sickness. He carried your disease. By His stripes, you are healed. God, I don't care what the devil says. I know what you said. And my faith is saying, this sickness has got to go. I bind it. I take authority over it. I resist it. It's got to go. My faith is reaching out for healing virtue from Jesus. You want to be healed? You have to agree with God. Simple as that. And you got to take a stand on the word. Ephesians says for us to stand in the whole armor of God and having done all to stand. He said for us to submit ourselves unto God, resist the devil, and he would flee. Now, right here would be a great place for a side journey. I'm not going to take it, but I'll tell you where it would be. When we're talking about standing and agreeing with God, 
It'd be a great place for us to spend a few minutes talking about how we talk. Saying what God says about it. Calling some of that stuff that we feel and think as a lie of the devil. And just saying what God said about it. I said I wasn't going to take that side journey. All right, so first thing, stand on the Word of God. We've got one more thing that we've got to talk about today, and we're going to be done for today. This is how you operate in faith. You stand on the Word of God. Here's another one. This is a, a way that God provided. You can employ the prayer of agreement with another believer. Now, you want to make sure you are praying with somebody that's going to stand on the word with you. You want to make sure you're praying with somebody that's going to pray in faith. But what do you do when you recognize that you've come up against something that might be bigger than your faith? What do you do when you're struggling to stay on the word about your current situation? Well, the first thing you want to do is recognize that and brush up on the word. In other words, take your medicine. Anybody in here that's on any kind of regular medication, there's a few things. I got some things that I take every day. Thyroid supplement and stuff like that. I want to make sure I take it when I'm supposed to. Sometimes I'll question, did I take that thing? Can't remember if I took it or not. So I, I've got me a little cheat system to where I can look. I got this little thing, you know, y'all know what I'm talking about. You put your pills in there and it's all on a day. And there's one in there for morning and night if you're supposed to take something morning or night. And so if I take the thing in the morning, I'll turn it around so night's facing me. And I, I, I walked in there last night, something I was supposed to take last night. And I said, I can't know if I took it or not. I mean, even, even vitamins, I take multivitamins and stuff every day. You know, you know, I walked in there and I looked at that little container and I looked in Saturday PM slot to see if it was empty or had stuff in it. And it, I had remembered it was empty. I said, well, okay, good. I'm good till the morning. But if you want to have faith for healing, you got to take your medicine regular. God said in His Word, He sent His Word and healed them. He prescribed, He sent you medicine. He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from all of their destructions. Now, as determined... And as disciplined and as intentional as you are about taking those pills. You've got to sow the word of God for healing into your spirit. Take your medicine. But then you can do something else too. You can call in some reinforcements. That's what we're talking about, the prayer of agreement. I'm going to say something I said a while ago, but in a different context. I said you can call in some reinforcements. How many of you know it's easier to pray for healing when you're not hurting? So you're hurting and you're struggling to stand in your faith. So get somebody... Oh, I have the same faith that you need. They're not hurting at the time.
to stand with you because they can pray. It's easier for them to pray. They're not experiencing the same thing. They're not in the same battle you are, but they got the same faith. Call in the reinforcements. Sometimes somebody else can help you touch Jesus. We've been talking about being practicing Christians around here. Here's a place where your church should be of a great blessing to you. If there's anybody that's able to stand with you on the Word of God, it should be somebody that has sat under the Word with you. And the Lord has communicated that truth to you and it's resonated with you and you've agreed together already. But sometimes it's, it's beneficial to have somebody stand with you that's not in the heat of the battle, but they take seriously what you're fighting and they can operate on the Word. How many of you know it's good to know that you're not fighting the devil alone. See, that's one of his tactics. Every time he's attacking us and warfare is going on, in addition to everything else you're feeling and thinking, he wants to try to convince you nobody really understands what you're going through right now or even cares. Matthew 18 and 19 says this, Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done of them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. How many of you know that sometimes God will honor the faith of another on your behalf or He will honor your faith on behalf of another. we got to believe that because that's what he said. That's why it's so important that you stay in fellowship. That's so important that we stay connected to true believers. We, there's times that we all get in when we need somebody to just be there for us. We need somebody to be there. I mean, we've been big shot. We've been tough guy. We've been independent. We've been off doing that. I, can, I got this. But right off when we run into a situation where we, man, I really need somebody in my corner that I can lean on a little bit, that can support me and encourage me and pray with me. And so God gave us this prayer of agreement. It is biblical for us to reinforce the faith of another and to receive that reinforcement. I'm going to read you scriptural validation of this and then we're going to be done today. In Mark chapter 2, listen at this. I love this story. Again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house, and straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word to them. Get the picture here. Jesus came. And the, the community, the whole area had heard about Jesus. They'd heard about the miracles, the healings. Here he comes to this place and he is preaching the word. And the place is jam-packed. They're crowded up around the door. You can't even get in the place. But here come some people that understand this principle that we're talking about. They come unto him bringing one sick of the palsy which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed whereon the sick of the palsy lay. Watch this. When Jesus saw their faith,
he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Can I tell you that sometimes Jesus will heal you because of the prayer of another? I want you to think about that a little bit. Having a strong faith for healing is important for us. But it's also important for others that we love. I want to encourage you. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Be strong in faith and pray in faith. Touch Jesus on their behalf and believe when you do that his healing virtue is going to flow. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and stand up with me as we come to a close today.